this former South Floridian, Coconut Creek High School, go Cougars, got his pro wrestling start here through Florida legend, wrestler, indie promoter and trainer, Rusty Brooks, and others, which we'll get into. On that, he is part of a big and bountiful Brooks family learning tree. He joined South Floridians like Norman Smiley, Gangrel, Luna Vachon, Diamante slash Fire Dash slash Angel Rose, and MVP to make a big time in professional wrestling from that tree. Whether you know him as Ryan O'Reilly back in the day, South Florida Indies, Roughhouse O'Reilly, Payne, or Connor O'Brien, his latest incarnation, Connor, of the WWE Tag Team, The Ascension with Victor, just finished a five-year run on the main roster. Counting his first and rare second opportunity with the mega company, Connor spent about 12 years wrestling and surviving in WWE Developmental and WWE The Main Stage. A former Coastal Championship Wrestling Champ, four-star Championship Wrestling Champ, Georgia Championship Wrestling Champ, and Deep South Wrestling, Jody Hamilton, the Master Assassin, Champ. And how about this? Longest reigning NXT Tag Team Champ as the Ascension, Connor Ryan is not only an accomplished pro wrestler, but, wait for it, wait for it, he is a licensed certified to perform wedding ceremonies. That is so cool. <laughs> and by the way, that's where we will start. <laughs> a celebrant, and thank you, Ryan. How did you, Connor of the Ascension, become a legal wedding official? <laughs> <laughs> well, first off, that was, that was one heck of an introduction. <laughs> I'm actually laughing right now. <laughs> uh, well, uh, well. First off, thank you. I, I'm excited to be on your on your show. It's been a long time, Jim. Uh, so to answer that question, um, I, you know, I was just, uh, I, you know, I, something just came over me one day. I, w I was sitting in my room and I wanted to uh, to become a. Uh, an ordained minister, and I thought that'd be something that's kind of cool. It's out of left field. Uh, people wouldn't expect it, but, you know, I always felt myself kind of close uh, to the Lord, you know. That's just my preference, of course, but uh, I just thought it was something really cool, and I went and I became a certified notary, too, so I was able to do legal paperwork, which I thought was really neat, so yeah, I got to have the privilege of uh, marrying a few of the uh, WWE superstars, and it was it was a it was a privilege to do that. It was uh, Sasha Banks. Um, I got to marry you know her with her husband, and I got to marry uh, Jason Jordan as well um, with April. So I thought that was pretty cool. So yeah, that's kind of the the quick gist of that. I was just bored one day, and I'm just sitting there thinking to myself, like, man, I think it'd be kind of cool to do something like that. And that's kind of how I just, I just kind of like fell into it. <laughs> when you go through that process, are you, are you an ordained minister then, or you're just a legal official? Uh, well, I'm actually, well, because I'm, I'm kind of both actually, because I am, uh, I'm a certified notary. I can do legal paperwork on top of uh, marrying people. So I can do, I can do baptisms, which is kind of cool. Um, but it's all legal, which is which is nuts, you know. But uh, it's also kind of neat, and it, and it was really uh, to do something like that. I remember the first time um, I did it. It was with Sasha and um, and her husband, and I I'll just never forget. I was with my wife. We were driving back, and I was tearing up, and she was like, "What What's wrong with you?" And I was like, "I just feel like I just did one of the greatest things in my life ever." And and she goes, "Really?" And I go, "Yeah, I just." I just, you know, basically gave them hand in hand through the through the love of God. Like I thought that was the neatest thing ever, you know. And I just was like, man, and I did it legally. <laughs> you know what's interesting too? The, yeah, what's interesting too in that is because we know you 
as far as South Florida Indie Wrestling, we know you through NXT. Those that followed Deep South Wrestling back in the day, the WWE Developmental, and even at WrestleManias, you were in some WrestleManias. And for you, some big moments there, but how this touched your heart spiritually as well to be able to do something like this. It's almost like because of your beliefs, my beliefs, but whether you believe or not believe, that's another matter. We're not trying to push that. You believe how you, what you want to. But the fact that it's almost like almost like a sign from above coming down to you and, and you're sitting in your room and it's like, you know what? You need to be a bridge here. You need to be someone that brings people together. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, it's just, I don't think you can put a price on something like that. You know, it's uh, to watch a to watch a couple cry, knowing that that's something that you did through a through a higher power. Like it's just the coolest thing, you know. And it's touching, and uh, it'd be interesting to hear how McFoley felt about his first one. <laughs> well, now wait, I was going to get into that because I was going to that that was my question. Did you know that means you have something else in common with McFoley? <laughs> Yeah, he was actually at her wedding, which was the coolest thing ever. And uh, and when I when I saw him, it actually was really intimidating because there was they had a couple high profile players there, you know. And I was like, oh man, this is this is very nerve wracking. And uh, you know, I had you know I had my Bible and everything with me, and I'll never forget. Mick Foley walked up to me, and he's just like, hey, what are you doing here? <laughs> 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 oh man, I was like. Well, you know, I'm I'm uh I'm going to be actually doing uh I'm actually marrying them. I'm going I'm going to be giving them away uh, to God basically. And he's like, "You're doing it?" And I was like, "I know, right?" Like, it's kind of crazy, but I was like, "It's so exciting." He's like, "Are you nervous?" And I was like, "Are you kidding me?" I was like, "I'm absolutely petrified." <laughs> it's like I've never done this before. So, uh, so it was uh, to me that was the biggest test was to do that in front of some of my peers, and um, for it to come out pretty good. You know, it was, uh, I did okay. I thought it was, uh, I thought it was, you know, pretty neat. And then to get, you know, afterwards to hear them, you know, to give you a little bit of feedback and it be, you know, more on the positive side. It was, it was really nice, actually. I was like, man, this is a, this is actually, you know, something that's really cool. And, you know, I didn't sleep the night before because I was afraid I was going to fumble over things or say the wrong thing do the wrong thing or not know an order of something the way that something was supposed to go. But, you know, uh, all in all, though, it, it ended up coming out, like, really nice. Like, it was it was beautiful, to be honest with you. So I was very I was very touched to be a part of it. Um, and, and it was a very, it was a very blessing moment in my life, to be honest with you. And it's really, really interesting and very cool as well. And, and it's funny, because Mick Foley performed a wedding ceremony, not... I want to say a year and a half, a little over a year ago, in South Florida, to uh, Jude McKenzie, an indie wrestler, Jude McKenzie, and Heather Kid Cadet Riker, who's very involved in a lot of different things, multi-talented, unbelievable, and she's very friendly with Mick, and her family's friends with him, and they actually had him perform the wedding ceremony, and she was on a TV show, TLC Say Yes to the Dress, so they put that all together, and Mick was like, part of that too so it was really cool but it was it, it was interesting seeing Mick doing that I mean dressed up not in his flannel and things like that and I, I'm sure I know the answer to this question but I'm gonna ask it anyway so when you're performing these wedding ceremonies it's not Connor or the Ascension it's Ryan performing the ceremony correct <laughs> Yeah, but of course, like any fan that sees the photos, you know, they're going to be like, oh, man, it's one of the Ascension guys, you know. <laughs> How is that possible? <laughs> Most of the time, when you do this, though. With uh, mankind, right? Like, <laughs> it almost kind of fits. And, and just think about this, you know. We know that one day that, you know, during Christmas, that these kids sit on, you know, Mick Foley claws <laughs> and... <laughs> They tell them what they want for Christmas, and meanwhile, you're sitting back going, oh my goodness, that's mankind. Like, <laughs> you're physically or you're mentally picturing him with that mask on, right? Yeah. At least that's what I do. And I'm like, man, I guess there's just crazier things in this world. <laughs> but I think it's so cool. <laughs> I it's, really do. It's very cool, and it's, and it's fun and funny, too, in a sense. And that part of it, as far as this <laughs> Santa Claus 
And uh, I'm wondering now too though, WWE superstar, wedding official, Ryan, are you going to be Santa Claus next? <laughs> uh, 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 I'll leave that to Mick. He's the man when it comes to that kind of stuff. <laughs> I'm not going to step on no toes there. <laughs> And then, and then, when you're performing ceremonies, is this just something you do for family and friends, or is this something you would do for others? Yeah, no, I don't charge. I, I don't. I, to me, that's just uh, that's more of just this is just in good faith. Like I just do this with my friends and family. You know, if they ask me, you know, I'll do it. I just uh, I just feel privileged to even be a part of it. To be honest with you. Well, I heard at the Jason Jordan wedding, the baker, who is a big WWE fan, I won't give his name away because I don't know if he would want me to say his name, but yeah, my, the cake must have been great because I know this German, German baker, and he's, <laughs> and he's awesome and just amazing, and that's a, just, just a little tie in there because you mentioned the Jason Jordan wedding and all. And the first thing that popped in my head when you said that was the German baker baking the big wedding, big wedding cake and all. So very fun stuff, very cool stuff and all. And all right, so you were in WWE five years on the main roster. What were those five years like for you? Uh, well, it, you know, it was, uh, it was a lot of fun. It, there was times where it was trying mentally, you know, um, Physically, sometimes, you know, the travels are always tough. You always hear stories about that. Those are very true. Um, of course, I was a lot bigger then. I'm, I'm about 290 right now. I was about 340 back then. Mm. So flying on the airplanes, it, it wasn't exactly the most comfortable. And, um, and, you know, before all this, you know, stuff took off that we're dealing with right now, you know, planes are packed pretty tight. Mm. And... Um, <laughs> You're, you're, you're basically, when you're getting on a plane, I was the last guy you'd want to see. So, um, yeah, it just, it was a lot of fun. It was very tough mentally. It was tolling at times, but, man, I got to tell you, like, when you go out there and you, and you see, like, the biggest thing for me was that when I would go out there, I loved seeing families, and, and that was just, my preference that's what i like some guys you know it was you know other things you know they were looking at maybe women or something like that me i just loved seeing a father and son connection that was the biggest thing for me and it didn't matter if i you know got beat up or if i lost or you know whatever it was but to see that kid cheer or or boo or whatever it was i knew that from that moment that his father and son were connecting because they were having a good time. So that would surpass and bypass all mental and physical pain that I was going through. It didn't matter at that point. When you're working for a company, no matter what company it is, but not just those five years, because that was on the main roster, but you had been combined with WWE through the ranks for 12 years. Do you yeah, ever? Yeah. yeah. Well, that's that's it's such a, it's a credit. It really is between developmental NXT, FCW, WWE. It it really is when you look at that because not many people can say that. Really, not many people can say that. And I'm wondering because you you mentioned the mental. Do you ever really prepare? Can be prepared for something like that, or you just have to go through it. Yeah, you just, you know, you always hear things, um, I think as far as any business goes, it's a matter of, you know, some people aren't meant for this. You've, you've heard that before. And, and, I, and I really feel this way about professional wrestling. You know, when it comes to a level of WWE, for example, because it's a rigorous schedule, you're on the road, you know, con consistently for four or five days a week, you know, on top of... You know, you might have to go do meet and greets or you might have to go do interviews or whatever it is. You know, you're consistently, consistently rolling. So the only way to really know, I don't think, I mean, you're going to hear stories. How many times have you told a kid never to do it and they go do it anyways? You just got to throw them, you just got to throw yourself into the fire and just, you know, see how it goes. I definitely say no matter what, though, you should always, always listen. And if people t 
tell you things, you should definitely take that perspective. Like, you know, if you're going through some hard times, go talk to somebody. If you're, whatever it might be, you know. Um, yeah, it's just, uh, you're never really going to be ready for this. You might mentally think you are, and I can't tell you how many people I've seen in my, my, my years of developmental, my years on the main roster, I've watched people completely fall apart, and it happens. You know, some people kick out of it, and some people, you know, just aren't so lucky and fortunate. Yeah, well, I'm glad you mentioned that too, because it, it and again, and you said it too, it, it's anything. It's not just professional wrestling or sports entertainment, whatever term. It's whatever job you get, people that work on Wall Street, People yes, that are working nine to five, five days a week. Maybe they get two weeks vacation. And the thing is with that rigorous schedule, because you'll hear old timers say, well, we were wrestling seven days a week and twice on Sunday. And that is so true. And you give them a lot of credit. But you also got to factor in that travel day, too, that you guys are on the road. So it's not only those days working shows at arenas. It's also the travel day, because you got to factor that in as well. And it, it, it does lend itself to a grind and it's interesting because then when that time came and the ascension was released in december when you did get that release what were some of your thoughts um well i i would be a fool to, to sit here and tell you that i didn't expect it you know um i think by that point i think i had already been mentally prepared and ready to go you know just to not get into a bunch of stuff I think it became very toxic on both ends, and it wasn't that it was bad. I didn't have a bad, I, listen, I love everybody that was there from top to bottom. I really do. I loved all the talent. You know, I, I love all the people in the office who I felt like I had a pretty good relationship with. It was just one of those things where, you know, it, they weren't using us, and there was just really, there was no room. Like, if you weren't going to use us, you know, just, it's okay to cut us. It's okay to let us go. Um, and, and it just, it was better for both parties. You know, do, do I hate leaving WWE? You know, I've, I've, that's all I've known as far as uh, professional wrestling really goes, you know, when it comes to, you know, a big time company. But I'm not going to let that stop me from continuing to do what I love. It's just, you know, it, it happens to everybody. It, there, there's not... There's nobody that's not going to eventually get let go, for the most part. There's maybe a handful of people that that doesn't happen to, but for majority, it's going to happen. I remember one time, I'll never forget this, it's funny you bring that up, because I remember one time in Deep South, we had Tommy Dreamer there, he was running TR at the time, and um, he had a big meeting with all of us, and he sat there, and we all sat around, and he talked with us, and he did explain to us that, listen, everybody gets fired. It happens. It's part of the business. It's the nature of the beast. You only can go on for so long doing this. You know, and as far as this goes, it's with the company. But how many times have we seen other guys come back? MVP is a great example. You know, he asked for his release, I think, back in the day, or he got like, or whatever it was. He ended up parting ways. And look at him now. Now we're watching him on Monday Night Raw. You know, now he's a producer. So anything's possible in this business. That's interesting and cool. You mentioned MVP, South Florida Zone, Hassan, Antonio Banks, and he was able to do that. He was able to do that, but also, looking at this, you had a first time around with WWE and then got a rare second time around, just like you mentioned MVP. It doesn't happen often. How was the first, how was the first time around for you compared with the second time around? They both were really good, you know, it was just one of those things where I think, I I don't know, I, I really, I had I had a great time, both avenues, both ventures, um, I think mentally I might have been a little young, I wasn't completely grown up at that time, as far as understanding and, and, and being more of an adult, I guess you could say, but um, but I, I mean, literally, like, that was, you know, I was a lot younger. I was running hot at that time. Um, you know, you come back, now you've got to prove. You have to prove. Prove yourself. And, you you know, you've got to go through, you know, I don't know if this is true or not, but you got to go through more of a grind, you know, the second time around. 
You know, so it's going to usually the second time around could be a little bit harder than the first time around. You know, um, but I mean, you just do it. You know, you just man up and you do it. And you know, like I said, look at MVP. He's doing great now, and I'm so happy for him. You know, there's a guy who we started the grind together early in the days. We would go to Duke school at times. Um, we'd be the first to open that school up before the trainers even got there. You know, that was what we did. You know, you just grind. Every day is a grind. Even to this day, even right now, it's a grind. But if you love it, it doesn't feel like work. So that's what's so great also. <laughs> well, Connor Ryan got his wrestling start through several people. And, of course, the legendary Rusty Brooks, who I mentioned in the intro, but then also you went to Duke the Dumpster Drossy School in Miami. You mentioned that with MVP. And Duke, another one that made it to WWE. So you have a lot of good experience just starting out in the ranks. And I want to go here with this because you were a singles champion on the Indies in South Florida and beyond. And in WWE Developmental, you were a singles champion. So that says a lot about the company. Did you ever want to return to singles wrestling, or you were good? You were okay with doing the tag? Um, yeah, you know, I think I think in wrestling, just in general, people present opportunities to you, and you just you just take the ball, and you run with it the best you can. Um, the Ascension was presented to me. In a, it was actually a five man team at one time. Um, I think, if I'm not mistaken, it was Ricardo Rodriguez who was leading this thing, who came up with the name and everything, which is kind of crazy. Um, and then we ended up having, I think it was Shaw, if I'm not mistaken, I, I feel pretty sure about that. It was... Uh, Primo. Primo. No, it was a Tito. Da, sorry. Good. Tito. Yep. And you were right. So, right. No, no, it wasn't Primo. Primo was already up on the main roster. Um, and then it was... Uh, Tom Latimer, and then was that it, I think, and then it was me. So there was, I think there was five of us. Um, so when you look at it, it just looks like a bunch of outcasts they just threw together, and you're just kind of, and, and keep in mind, this was the original NXT. I think I got kicked off that day, or the day before. I flew in, and then I got approached with the Ascension gimmick, and they were just like, hey, what do you think about this? And I'm looking around, and I'm like, man, are you guys just thinking about firing all of us? Because I don't see how any of us would ever blend together. It just looks like, yeah, well, they don't have nothing for you, so let's just put these five people together and see what happens. But, you know, needless to say, you see what it turned into. It ended up turning into something pretty big at one point, you know, and uh, it, it got me at the main roster run. So going back to the question, man, I can do either or. I can do a singles and I can do tag. It doesn't matter to me. I love doing both. I was a tag tag team with J-Dog, you know, Jim, down in South Florida. You know, I tagged with J-Dog, and I also did singles runs, too, so. Ryan. Hey, Ryan. Yes, sir. The Irish Thug Connection. <laughs> yes, yes, the Irish Thug Connection, yes. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> don't, 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 if anybody's listening to this, don't Google that, whatever you do. <laughs> Yeah, so, so I, you know, I just feel like it's important to know both avenues no matter what. And when you're approached with an opportunity, you just take it. If it's singles, it's singles. If it's tag, you just make the best of it, you know. So hopefully that answers that question. It does. And it's interesting because you, you've got to, if, if that, look, if the singles opportunity isn't there and they're offering a tag team opportunity and it works, which it did. You guys were NXT tag team champions. And like I said in the intro, longest reigning. And that's a feather in the cap right there to be able to do that. And you guys had a different look doing something different than everybody else, which lent itself as well. And it got you to the main roster. So right there, it, it just spoke volumes. And you got to participate in WrestleManias. Such a huge event. What was it like just being a part of a WrestleMania? It's overwhelming, to be honest with you. Um, you've got tons of movie stars. You've got tons of, you know, your your peers. Um, you've got a lot of your old school 
generational wrestlers that paved the way for you that are there. Um, the cameras everywhere, even backstage. Places, I mean, the usually the stadium is flooded with people that you don't even know. There's carts going all over the place, you know, shipping talent from one side to another to do promos or to do surprise appearances or whatever it might be. Um, it, it's a lot. It, it's a lot. And it's little things that you don't think about because usually you think about let, let them just hit my music and I'm just going to come walking out. But there's so much more to it than that. And uh, when you're backstage and you see it, it it's, it's mesmerizing. But what was even more mesmerizing to me was actually walking out and seeing what looked like miles and miles of people. And it was just like, wow, this is, this is amazing. And it's so loud and you can't hear. And it, it, these are just memories that you just never forget. You never, ever forget them. And, and so I'm gonna take this back a little bit to a, another gentleman that you and I know. And that's a gentleman by the name of Bruno Sassi. And he gave me some of the best advice I'd ever had. And he told me, by Delta Slam, he told me, he goes, I want to give you a piece of advice. He goes, every time you walk out, always embrace every moment. Because you never know when it's going to be your last. And that is always up with me and it's something that I'll always remember and it's something that I'll always pass on if I'm going and I'm talking to other people or if I'm at a show and I'm back. that is probably some of the best advice I'd ever had and so now fast forwarding this moment is playing in my head as I stop and I look and I see miles of people and you just breathe it in and you listen and you realize for that moment that this is everything that you've worked for. You're at that moment. And it's amazing. And I was very, very lucky and very fortunate that I had several other moments that were like that. So I consider myself very lucky and very grateful. So that's, that was what my WrestleMania experience was like. Um, Afterwards, everyone's happy, everyone's high-fiving each other, hugging each other. The after parties are great because everyone's just so happy. This big, big, you know, the grandest stage of them all, big pay-per-view is done. The buy rates are big. Fans had a great time. The guys had great matches. Everybody's just ecstatic and everyone's celebrating together. And it's just, it's amazing. It really is. And it's something I always want, I tell people, I always hope that everybody at least has the opportunity to at least experience that moment once because it's unbelievable. It is amazing, like you said, unbelievable as well. It also equates to me somewhat to if you would like to see a rock festival outdoors or U2 outdoors and they have the visual where they show the crowd from the stage and like you said, I mean, it's just like, looks like miles of people and you're like holy mackerel At Wrestlemania when you're there and you see all those people like that it's just an incredible visual with that and you mentioned about famous people being at Wrestlemania so I'm wondering Wrestlemania or not have you met any famous people through your WWE stardom <laughs> oh yeah I mean you, you meet you, you meet a lot of celebrities especially when we're always out in uh, LA like it's just it's nonstop, you know. One of, you know, I got to meet one of my childhood heroes, Arnold Schwarzenegger, which I thought was pretty cool. Um, that that's always neat, you know, when it comes to to meeting, you know, celebrities you grew up watching um, and just emulating when you were a kid. You know, I can't tell you how many times I'd run around and pretend, you know, I was Arnold Schwarzenegger from Commando. You know, um, I think one of the coolest moments I had it was one probably one of the most bizarre moments, and it just kind of caught me off guard was. I was at the TV hotel, and I'm not sure which WrestleMania it was, but I'll never forget the door opened up and Pee Wee Herman stepped on. And I was like, you gotta be kidding me. There's just no way this is really happening. And it just as cool as could be, you know, he just turned around and he was just like, hey, Connor. And I was like, what just happened? Like, what? <laughs> like, what? 
like, what? Like, I grew up watching you. <laughs> like, this is crazy, right? Like, this is nuts. So, yeah, it's just moments. It always comes back to moments with wrestling. And, you know, you get to meet these people. You just embrace every second of it. Because, again, it goes back to what Bruno always told me. You just never know when it's going to be your last. So you appreciate every moment that you have with meeting these celebrities or or meeting these uh, these wrestlers that paved the way for us. You know, you just... You, you just cherish every moment. You just take advantage of it. It's so funny because when I think of the two names, talk about two polar opposites than Arnold Schwarzenegger and Pee Wee Herman. <laughs> <laughs> right? <laughs> no. No. But that was that, and that's my childhood. I wonder why I was so confused. 